the objectives of my work are to understand the influence of uh, adjuvants on long-term humoral responses to influenza following vaccination. Specifically, um, this will be done in the context of the PCERN rapid trial in the study number three. And as we all heard, um, it used the Canadian pandemic H1N1 influenza vaccine, which contained the ASO3 adjuvant, as well as 25% of the antigen dose of the regular um, seasonal vaccines. So our hypothesis is that the low dose of antigen in the adjuvant vaccine may actually enhance the short-term response at the expense of long-term immunity. Now, the PCRN RT03 study was completed um, between November 2009 and January 2010. Uh, it consisted of uh, 167 pediatric subjects aged between 6 and 35 months. Uh, these subjects were given the Apanorex vaccine, so again, the ASO3 adjuvanted vaccine. Um, they were given two doses. Um, the timeline of the study is shown here. At visit one, these subjects were given uh, at visit one, um, a baseline uh, serum sample was collected first, and then they were given the first dose of vaccine. Three weeks later, at, the, at visit two, um, another serum sample was collected, and they were given the second dose of vaccine. And finally, uh, three weeks later, um, a final serum sample was collected. Um, in the study, they found that following the one dose of vaccine, um, serum protection rates were up at 80%. And following a second dose of vaccine, serum protection rates were 100%. Now, the serum samples from rapid, uh, all the rapid trials are cataloged in the PCERN archive and are available for additional studies. Uh, for, my, for my analysis, we selected um, samples from the RTO3 study in which multiple aliquots of serum were available at all three time points. So we, collected, um, we selected a total of 73 subjects for further analysis. With these serum samples, we um, performed three analyses. The first is the hemagglutination inhibition assay. Uh, this gives the titer of flu-specific antibodies, and this was previously completed at the National Microbiology Laboratory in Winnipeg. Uh, we next performed um, the micro-neutralization assays, which give um, the titers of functional antibodies that can neutralize viral entry. And finally, we developed an avidity ELISA, which uh, measures the binding strength of flu-specific antibodies. And we're using this as the readout for the development of a humoral immune response. So to go into this with more detail, um, during a humoral immune response, so following a vaccination, for instance, antigen-specific B cells will produce antibodies. Of course, it's much more complicated than this. And for any given antigen, um, a pool of B cells can be activated to produce antibodies. Given enough time and enough um, antigen, these B cells can mature and undergo affinity or avidity maturation. And when this occurs, um, the antibody binding strength will increase. So the antibody will bind um, uh, more tightly with the antigen. Um, however, the, the specificity of these antibodies don't change. So at the end of a humoral immune response, there are high affinity B cells and antibodies, which um, will fight off the disease as well as remain in the immune system, um, ready for the subsequent exposure to the same antigen. So this is in comparison to early in the immune response where there are low, low affinity antibodies. So in our avidity ELISA, uh, we measure, uh, we determine the avidity index. So we're quantifying the strength of antibody binding which is specifically calculated as um, the concentration of urea required to displace 50% of flu-specific antibodies. Now looking at our results, um, a reminder that uh, with each subject, uh, there are three time points, visit one, two, and three. Visit one is the baseline serum sample. Visit two is following the first dose of vaccine, and visit three is following the second dose of vaccine. And when we consider all the subjects together, we see that um, as expected, the HAI and MN titers increase with each dose of vaccine. Similarly, when we look at the avidity or the antibody, antibody binding strength, um, following each dose of vaccine, the, um, the antibody binding strength increases. As part, of the, as part of the original study, they found that some subjects were previously primed, um, meaning that uh, they had HAI titers at visit one above 10 or even above 40. So when we subdivide all of these subjects according to the HAI titer, we see that 25% were previously primed, and this is shown in blue. Uh, with these subjects, we see that the HAI and MN titers um, following the vaccinations are much higher in comparison to the naive subjects. Um, similarly, the avidity um, increases with each dose of vaccine um, in both the naive and the primed uh, subjects. 
Now, it's interesting when we further look um, within these two subgroups of subjects. Um, looking more closely at the naive subjects, when we look at the avidity index and compare the difference between visit one and visit two and visit two and visit three, we find that some subjects show a decrease in avidity. So in 20% of um, the um, naive subjects, we see that at visit two, the um, avidity index shoots up and becomes significantly different from the remainder of the naive group. And furthermore, um, with, these, uh, with this 20% of subjects, uh, visit between visit two and visit three, there's a significant decrease in the avidity index. So this type of response is very unusual. Um, the remaining 80% uh, um, showed the expected progression of, a humoral, of the humoral immune response, where the avidity index increases with each, um, with each dose of vaccine. Uh, this is in comparison to uh, the HAI and MN titers, where um, all the naive subjects show the expected um, increase in antibody titers. Now, when we uh, do the similar analyses with um, the prime subjects, uh, we see that um, in 50% of the prime subjects, um, there's actually a plateau in the avidity index. Um, so there's no change um, following, each, following the two doses of vaccine uh, in comparison to the other 50% where after um, each dose of vaccine, there was a signif significant increase in the avidity index. And again, the HAI and MN titers are increasing with each dose as we would expect. Um, now, to, now to conclude, although this is just generating more research questions, why is there a failure to increase antibody avidity following a second immunization? Um, and this was detected in a significant minority of the subjects. So in total, 27% um, of all subjects, and specifically 20% of naive subjects had um, a significant decrease in avidity index between visit two and visit three, and 50% of the prime subjects showed no change in the avidity index. These results suggest that the maturation of the humoral immune response was abnormally truncated. Uh, we don't know what's happening right now, um, but we hypothesize, as I mentioned earlier, it's that the uh, low dose of um, antigen in the adjuvant of vaccine may be insufficient to allow um, proper B cell affinity maturation in some of these subjects. Also, um, seeing that in 50% of the prime subjects, there was no change in avidity, um, the question is, what is the role of pre-existing immunity on the response to influenza vaccines? So for instance, um, what is the effect of, um, what is the, the, um, the role of responses to other strains of influenza or even other strains of virus? Uh, future studies will use, um, we'll, we'll have uh, further analyses on PCR and archive samples, as well as um, I have plans for animal studies as well. Um, and acknowledgements, I'd like to thank my supervisor, Dr. Brian Ward, as well as Dr. David Shifley and the R203 investigators. I'd like to thank Johnson and Angela for help with um, avidity and MN assays, respectively, and to the funding agencies. Thank you.